Now we you got me here, is Mike. Hey, there we are, Coach. <laughs> 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 welcome in and we welcome should, home. <laughs> we should have done the test run with you yesterday. Holy smokes, that was more stressful than trying to get some of our hitter swings right. <laughs> hey, man, I tell you, it is so good to see you. I can't wait to be up there soon so we can catch up. How, how's Aaron? How you, how's your, how are all the girls? How's your family? How are you? Everybody's doing great. Um, you know, Aaron has been you know great through this process. Obviously, um, you know, for this year, we're apart. She's... Uh, She's still up in Seneca. She has a dance studio and all the girls are there and the girls are doing great. Um, looking forward to Thursday. They're, they're going to come in the day before my uh, two bedroom apartment will, will host four girls and myself, my wife and our two dogs. So it's going to be a, a, a tight, we'll be like sardines in that little, uh, that little apartment here in the Vista. Uh, but I'm, I'll be excited to see them. It'll feel like baseball season having them all here. Uh, so, uh, but it, it's been, it's been great. I mean, it, it's certainly, uh, been a little bit challenging just not seeing the family, but Aaron's made it a point to come down once a week if she can and any opportunity I get to go home, I go home. But, you know, now that we're in season, obviously my focus is on the program and, and the task at hand, which is, uh, trying to get us off to a great start. Monty, um, it, you know, there's a lot of, fans that you know they, they they keep they've been saying this for months it, it feels this feels right Monty's home he's at South Carolina this is where he belongs uh you know how I feel about it um you know has has anything changed for you from last time you were here I mean since you've been the head coach down here in Charleston and then up obviously in the upstate and and now you're back in a place that you know inside and out you're not you're from right down the road, you're from Lugol, South Carolina. Has anything changed, though, just kind of being back in the building and putting those colors back on? Well, I think um, just for me personally, I'm just I'm just older and more experienced. I mean, I think I bring a level of experience to the program, uh, you know, having been through many, many situations, any situation that a coach can go through with players and with staff. Um, I've been through it, so I'm just trying to help uh, Coach Kingston – um, any way that I can. We've got a great coaching staff and we collaborate daily, just trying to give them my input based on my experiences and uh, and help him any way that I can. Um, you know, coming back and just focusing really on the offense, the recruiting. Um, and it, it, it's it been um, it's been easier from a focus standpoint. You know, as a head coach, you, you have to wear very a, a lot of hats and you have to deal with so many different things. Um, it's been refreshing in that regard that I just I just focus on trying to help our players get better. Uh, recruiting and, and coaching is the only two things that I really focus on now. So from that standpoint, it's you know, it's been it's been nice. Uh, but as far as the program, look, the expectations are very high. They always have been, um, you know, uh, but the expectations are uh, for me and for uh, and for for this team. Um, you know, the expectations are to get better every day and and, and come out every day. Um, in and prepare to get better every day. Um, I'm not a big uh, end at the end of the season guy. Like I don't talk a lot. We all know the expectations of this program to get to Omaha. Everybody knows that. Um, but for me, it's about having an Omaha level focus every day. I think that's the key. Like if if we're going to get to Omaha, we have to have a great system in place. Everybody in college baseball right now has the goal of getting to Omaha. What's very important is the system that you have in place to get there. So when it comes to your, you know, your offensive approaches and your ability to play defense, run the bases, execute pitches, situational hit, situational pitch, uh, just outcompete people. I think it's it simply boils down to that. You better have a really good plan. It's it's, it's very easy to say we want to get to Omaha. It's another thing to have a system in place to get you there. Uh, so uh, you know that's that's been the, the key for us is the process of developing that system to put our guys in a position to be successful. Well, there's a lot of talk around here about uh, the, the the hitting the baseball. You know, last year, of course, was was a disappointing season uh, with the injuries to the pitching staff, and uh, and then really, you know, the bats weren't always there. Mm -hmm. uh, what can you say about you know through fall practice and and now through the time you've worked with this team so far? Uh, what can you say about this this team's ability on offense? Because it, it's kind of the opposite now. There's a lot of talk about the arms. Uh, and then the hitting, you know, I don't know that you'd call it a big question mark, but, uh, you know, there, there are some some questions about it. So, so how, from your perspective, 
have things gone in that in that department. Well, I can understand the questions. I mean, if, if you look at just look at our lineup, you know, this year, um, we, we only have two guys that played every day last year that are back. I mean, when, so when you start looking at it, I mean, we've got, you know, Wimmer and Braswell are really the only two guys that played every day who are back. Kevin Madden played a good bit and was injured. Uh, Stone played a little bit, Messina a little bit, Lee Croy a little bit. You know, like we don't, we don't, we don't return a lot of guys that have SEC at bats and SEC experience. So there certainly should be question marks. So, you know, my approach is, is very, very simple. It's, is we got to be patient. We got to keep coaching our guys and developing our guys and trying to put them in a position to be successful. We got to make sure we're behind them, not, not get frustrated with them if we have a tough day offensively. Uh, but we've got some guys who are, who are certainly capable of having, uh, you know, great offensive years. It's just a matter of them going out and doing it. You know, I feel like that sophomore class, um, those guys are better than they were a year ago. Uh, Cole Messina may be the hottest hitter uh, in the program right now. I mean, he's tearing the cover off the ball. Lee Croy's been a, a very, very high on base percentage type player, a scrappy at bat guy, doesn't strike out a ton, gets on base a ton. You know, we're going to have to, you know, we're going to have to cut you with our knife a hundred times. I mean, that's, that's going to, that's going to be how we beat people. We don't, we don't have tons of power. We have guys that have power potential, but you know, we're not going to be a team in my opinion uh, that can just roll out there and blast three run homers. You know, we're going to have to use the whole field. We're going to have to grind out at bats. We're going to have to walk, get hit by pitches, move runners, get our bunts down, steal bases. One thing that, I am fairly excited about if 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 we can do it. We have some guys who are capable of stealing bases. We've run a ton uh, in the fall and in the preseason. Uh, that's that's part of our arsenal now with a handful of players that can do it. We're not going to run with guys that can't do it, um, but we should be a team that can run a little bit more this year if the uh, opportunity presents itself. So you know, for me, we're going to have to grind. I mean, we're going to have to be a team that grinds out at bats and. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to beat you that way. We're going to have to win pitches and win at bats. And, um, you know, it could be ugly at times. But, uh, you know, I, I like having that chip on your shoulder type team. I mean, to me, that's like what it's all. That's what college baseball is all about is just being blue collar, uh, just being, you know, tough as all get out, uh, you know, a tough over talent mindset. You know, your talent is what it is, but how tough you are is really what's going to define this team because we know that from a talent perspective on the mound, it's, uh, it's quite impressive. You know, there's some guys here that have a chance to do some special things. So offensively, we just got to be blue collar and, and just, you know, tough as we can be. Monty Lee, assistant head coach at Carolina. So, Mont, the, the game has, has kind of at least shifted from a mentality standpoint. Over the, It's a power game now. You know, every, everybody's – you you look in the big leagues, you get paid to throw 100 miles an hour, you get paid to hit 30 home runs, even in lieu of hitting 230 on the season. If you hit 30 home runs, they're going to pay you. Right. you know. And, and so that's a trickle-down effect to college baseball. And then, of course, and we, we see it w way lower than that. I mean, there's – I'll say this, you're not going to say it, but there's doofuses out there that are coaching kids that are 10, 11 years old and they're focused on hitting the long ball. And I'm right. like, man, this kid doesn't even know how to hit. So – but – you're an elite coach. You're an elite hitting coach. And, and that's, that's coming from guys like Justin Spoke, for instance, who, who give you all the credit in the world for make, turning them into the hitters they were. How, how do you – what type of challenge is that for you in recruiting kids and understanding that, that a lot of their focus now is on doing something that isn't necessarily always going to be the best thing for the team that you're playing on, the program that you're playing in? How do you kind of combat some of that? That's a great question. I mean, that's a broad question. I don't know how much time I've got on the air here, um, but I can, you want. I can, I can give you my, my philosophy and opinion on that. Um, you know, I've always been accused as a hitting coach of being a power oriented guy because our teams typically hit a lot of home runs, but we hit a lot of home runs because we free our players up to swing the bat. Like I'm not trying to control their at bat and I want them to understand that they have to have the freedom to understand that you're going to swing and miss you're going to strike out. You're going to fail miserably, um, you know, as a hitter. So first and foremost, don't ever get cheated on your swing. Take your best swing, right? You always want to take your best swing. Um, we, we, don't, we don't slow our swing down. We don't check our swing. You know, those are like no-nos in the program. So if you're going to swing the bat, we want to take our best swing. So that's the first thing we tell our guys is 
you're going to swing and miss. It's okay, but take your best swing. You know, if you get a good pitch to hit, take your best swing. I believe that power develops later. I think it's one of the last tools you develop as a baseball player. So for me personally, I want to create good hitters first. So we want to hit line drives all over the field. We want the ability to hit with two strikes. We want a situational hit because those are things in your toolbox that you're going to need when power does not show up. You know, you want to have an offense that can win games when the wind's blowing in. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a tough feeling as a head coach or a hitting coach to know that if the wind's blowing in, you're going to have a hard time scoring runs because you can't hit balls out of the ballpark. So for me, it's more about having a complete offense that can beat you without the home run. And then we have that in our back pocket. We do have some guys with some power that if the wind's blowing out and power presents itself, we can hit the ball out of the ballpark too. So, you know, to me, it's about plate discipline, swinging at strikes and taking balls, understanding the strike zone, uh, taking your wall, understanding what a quality at bat is. At the end of the day, you know, I'll give you a great stat. 90% of the time when we have 50% quality at bats, we win. So, you know, your batting average, batting average doesn't mean a whole lot unless you're putting together quality at bats. Like a guy that has to, that his own base percentage is his batting average. Those are guys that just put balls in play and make a lot of weak outs, right? So for me, it's about how good a job do I do at getting on base and understanding that the quality of my bats will dictate my success. So batting average to me is your quality at bat percentage. I don't care about batting average as much as I do. This guy is a quality at bat guy. He'll take a hit by pitch. He'll walk. He'll bunt a guy up. You know, he'll get an eight pitch at bat. Regardless of the result, this guy will take bullets out of the pitcher's gun. Like those are things that win you games. We got to get the starting pitcher out. So, you know, guys that can manage at bats and don't throw away at bats or have empty at bats. You know, those are the guys that we're going to play. Uh, so uh, to me, it's about that. It's about putting together good at bats and not defining yourself by how many hits you get uh, or defining yourself by like your launch angle or all that stuff. You know, to me, it's about do I hit the ball hard? Do I stay in the strike zone? And can I situational hit? And if I got power, it's going to come out. You know, we don't really talk about hitting home runs, but, you know, we hit 100 of them last year and we never talked about hitting home runs. We just use the whole field and take your best swing. And then, and then you plug analytics into that. Do some coaches do some coaches get too uh, consumed and absorbed in in analytics versus others? Because there's isn't there a fine line uh, as a, as a coach? Like you've got like the coach Tanners of the world who who made a living off of going off of the feel of the game mm-hmm. and understanding guys on the bench. Right? Hey, you know, so and so get a bat. It's time to go in there and you know, maybe bang one out of the ballpark or what happens, but, but he always seemed to have a feel. And then there's some coaches who strictly look at numbers. Like what, where is that fine line in being a coach and using analytics to coach your team? Well, you know, and it's a great question. I would even say like, you know, in coach Tanner's day, like coach Tanner, it depends on what you call analytics, right? Like, I mean, if you look at stats, split stats, you know, hitting with runners in scoring position, the ability to get on base as a leadoff guy, Like, that's still analytics, so to speak, right? That's still looking at numbers. And Coach Tanner looked at numbers. Um, But I think ultimately it was about putting the best nine on the field that day to help you win a game. Not necessarily your nine best players. It was your best nine to win that day. And whatever that looks like, a lefty-righty matchup, wind's blowing in, let's play our line drive-oriented guy instead of the power guy. We can run on this guy, put a little more speed in there. Whatever it called for, we've got a starter going today who's been getting hit. Maybe we need to put our best offense out there to win that game. I think it's more – that's where the feel of the game takes place. It's like you can't get bogged – if you spend too much time in the numbers, you'll talk yourself out of playing, guys, because this game is so hard that you're going to find – every baseball player has warts. That's what I say. You know, like every player has their weaknesses. It's about using stats to find their strengths. Uh, so to me, I look at analytics or stats as more of like this is the strength of this player, and this is where we can use him to win a game, win games for us. So, and not, I'm not going to hijack this. I know Phil and JC want to ask ask a, a couple of questions before we get you out of here. But, but what do you think Ralph Civitary would do if you opened up a computer with a bunch of analytics in it? How would he respond to that? Well, you know, I, I'll say this about Ralph Cemetery, who I learned. I learned maybe maybe the most important two lessons that you can have as a coach 
is number one, he stuck with us. Yep. So when we struggled at the plate, he stuck with us and he always loved us. He always showed us that he loved us and he always stuck with us. So, you know, from a player's perspective, like when you're on that 0 for 20 skid and you know that the head skips got your back and that he cares about you just as much when you're struggling as, as, as he does when you're going really good, that means a lot to the psyche of the player. And I think that's one of the things that as I've gotten older, like these are kids. They need our support. Like we got to show them that we love them and that we care about them. Even when they're struggling or the team is struggling, that's when a coach, in my opinion, uh, shows his true value. They're not just pieces of the puzzle or pawns on a chessboard. Um, you know, you got you to gotta always show that you have their back. So that would be uh, Ralph's way of coaching, and I think it worked, you know, pretty good. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he. I can only imagine throwing splits at him these days, Monty. He would say, what? Just hit the ball. <laughs> I'm on derby every day. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> just, just hit the ball. <laughs> uh, Go ahead, JC. How, how much better has Braylon Wimmer gotten, in your opinion, since last year? I, I read John Whittle's reports and stuff, and it seems like, you know, not only did he win – uh, uh, the starting job on the infield, but he's hitting the ball better. You know, can, can you get, kind of speak to his game and kind of how he's upped it a little bit? Well, you know, I, I didn't have uh, too much of an opinion of Wim just outside of when we played against South Carolina, just, you know, my eyes and what I saw out of him. Uh, you know, he, I think he would tell you super athletic. We thought he was the most athletic player on the roster. Um and and um, you know could make could make the elite athletic play could blast a baseball when he's on but you could get him if you got him in the right counts if you made pitches you could get him out so the one thing that that we did or the only thing that I've really done with him is just show him the value of staying in the middle of the plate and just and just hunt pitches that you can hit hard and take the pitches that you can't and he had the lowest swing and miss rate of any hitter in our lineup this fall. So he didn't chase pitches out of the zone in the fall. He's got tremendous pop. Um, so, you know, I expect him to have a great year for us. Defensively, it's freakish, you know, as far as the ground that he can cover. Um, you know, uh, Coach Kingston uh, gave him the best nickname ever. He calls him the octopus uh because he's so long it's like an octopus out there building a the ball it's unbelievable and i think i think he i mean it's i mean a line drive hit that guy's got so much reach and athleticism to catch balls and he can cover so much ground he hits a ground ball to short man you better get rid of the ball because he can absolutely fly uh he's an elite base stealer uh you know i think his bat the ball skill has gotten better uh, just because he's more selective at the plate. Uh, and I think he's got a chance to be an elite defender. I mean, I don't recall him having a bad day defensively this whole year. He's been pretty phenomenal. Uh, not to give away any any secrets here, but do you do you have an idea where, where you're going to put him in the lineup? Is he, is he a middle-of-the-order guy? Are you going to hit him at the top? I think we – I mean, he, he certainly deserves the opportunity to be, uh, you know, somewhere, and, and I don't know what Coach Kingston will decide. I mean, we've, we've yeah, thrown yeah. around a couple ideas, but he's got to be in the mix to be in the top three to four spots in that order. He's the oldest player we got, you know, like he's the most experienced player here. So, you know, he's got to – we got to put, you know, put our offense on his shoulders a little bit from an experience standpoint. So he's got to be right there in the mix at the top somewhere. This is my final one for you, Monty. I'll let these guys ask you anything they want. But um, obviously, coaching these, coaching the offense throughout the fall and now throughout the spring, and being on you know in another dugout last year. I mean, you you had the outside view of the program. Now you got the inside view of the program. But you had to coach your hitters against this staff, and I know that everybody in that organization is pretty excited about the arms that the Gamecocks are going to run out there this year. Describe it from your side and, and coaching your guys up against them and, and what they've been able to face over the last five or six months as they prepare for this season. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I don't know if there's a better a better staff in the country for a group of hitters who haven't played a ton together to have to challenge themselves against every single day. Um, I mean, when you look at, you know, the guys like you got Sanders, Hall, Mahoney, you know, Becker, Jerzenbeck, I mean, you know, those those five guys alone are their weekend caliber starters in most SEC programs. Uh, I mean, 
you know, and then you got Hicks on top of that, who's coming back, who could pitch on the weekends for a lot of programs too. I mean, we've got, and I could go on and on about other guys in the program, but, you know, just our starting pitching options um, are, are pretty dang good. I mean, Sanders, you know, Sanders has been 94 to 97, you know, with three pitches. Hall's been up to 96 with three pitches. Mahoney's up to 96, 97. I mean, those, those three guys alone, I mean, they're, they're super, super talented. And then, you know, Becker's a lefty who's an ultra athlete. Reminds me of Sam Weatherly, who I had at, you know, at Clemson. Uh, very athletic and spin the breaking ball. Um, he's got kind of an invisible fastball that he kind of pitches at the top of his own. Guys can't get to it. Um, Jerzen Beck is, is going to be an, an absolute dude at this level. Can spin the breaking ball up to 94, 95 with three pitches. Um, so, uh, and I'm sure, you know, Hicks is a turbo sinker guy, so he's a different look than all those guys. Um, so, uh, and I'm, look, I'm missing a bunch of arms, uh, yeah. but, um, you know, it's, um, you know, another guy too, that's been really good, uh, is Phipps, you know, Jackson Phipps has been hurt. He's a lefty up to 95, uh, you know, with a good slider. And I mean, we haven't had very comfortable at bats against him either, you know, and that's not even talking about, you know, guys like. Eli Jones and Proctor, you know, the transfer from Cal who throws wiffle ball sliders and Kate Austin, you know, who's a proven veteran, you know, bullpen piece. I mean, you know, I just feel like we have, uh, you know, a, a lot of really good options when it comes to pitching. Uh, so, uh, and, and you guys know this, look, you can have the best offense in the world. If you don't pitch, it don't matter. So, I mean, we got to pitch and play defense and, you know, we got to, we got to, you know, try to, help our, our pitching staff by scoring as many runs as we can because most days based on the talent that we can roll out there, uh, you know, if we can play defense behind them, we're going, we should be in every game. Can't wait to see y'all got anything or you, you good. I uh, just, just have a, a couple more questions about a couple guys, just Gavin Cassis and, and Carson Hornig, uh, you know, your, your thoughts on those guys heading into the season. Cassis, of course, the Vanderbilt transfer for those that don't know and Hornig's from Kansas. And uh, apparently, from, you know, from what I've read, has been having a pretty good preseason. Yeah, both those guys, uh, you know, Gavin, tremendous power. Uh, probably, I would, I would say, you know, has the most power on the club. Um, but he's a really good hitter. I mean, he'll use, use the whole field, but he does have some power. I think he's hit, you know, in the fall and spring, six or seven home runs. Certainly think he's going to be a middle of the order, RBI, you know, type guy. Uh, Hornig is a little bit different. He has just as much power, but he's a little more patient at the plate. You know, he's going to take his walks a little bit more. Hornig, Hornig's just the, the big thing that Hornig's got to do is just be able to get his a hack off and get to a good fastball more consistently. Because when he touches it, I mean, he turned Noah Hall around first pitch of an inner squad last weekend, 96 mile hour fastball, and hit it like 115 miles an hour off the wall. Like it's legit. It's legit. Um, but he's just got to get to the fastball more. Um, you know, I could see Hornig, uh, you know, being more of a top of the order type guy because we he will take his walks and get on base some, but he does have a lot of power potential. We just got to keep him healthy. He's battled some injuries, uh, so we got to try to keep that guy healthy. But uh, we expect big things out of both of those guys. Right. Monty, can't, can't wait to see you, man. Uh, really appreciate you taking time out of your day. We, I know that you're busy. I, I, I never thought I'd see the day that Monty Lee and Scott Wingo were on the same coaching staff. That's got to <laughs> that's, that's got to be fun, right? Well, you know, I coached him when he was a freshman. So he <laughs> and um, you know, I, I, I give him, I give him crap all the time. Coach Tanner used to say, "Well, you know, we got to play him because he, he can play defense and he'll get hit by pitches, and that's about it." <laughs> <laughs> how many did what, what was it like 14 or 15 it was a lot times? it oh, was a lot and you know and that you talk about a grinder baseball player like those are the kind of guys we gotta we gotta get in this program because he's just an absolute winner the players love him and it's been uh it's been a lot of fun being able to work with him well, i think i speak on behalf of a lot of people out there they're all happy that you're back in the program man it, it is so good to see i can't wait to see you soon and um I'll let you know, uh, trying to get up there for the weekend. So I'll, I'll let you know when, when we make it up and come down and, and fuss and discuss for a little while. But thanks again, buddy. I really do appreciate it. Thanks for having me on, guys. You got it. There you go. Monty Thank Lee, you. assistant head coach of the South Carolina Gamecocks. He is uh, one of the best. Phil, I know we've skipped a, a, a break, so we'll have to guess get it in in um, an hour or two. But um, yeah. hopefully everybody learned something there from 
I, I think one of the I've always thought that's one of the premier coaches in, in the country. 